Hi, how you guys doing? Welcome back to Matea Makes. So, I went, sat down at my computer today, went to go video edit all the footage I had from the week, and only two files are not corrupt. So, all the footage I recorded all week, I can't use. Can't use any of it, except for two clips that I don't even talk in. So, all the explaining and showing you how to remove rivets and all that, can't use any of it. Just can't. Super frustrating. So, luckily, I didn't remove the rivets from the back of the bus because I can't just put the rivets back in and show you how to take them out. It can't. Just can't. So, let's go to the back of the bus and I'll show you how to remove rivets again. I've probably shot this maybe three or four times because I just wasn't happy with it, but let's try to get it in one take. And hope that it doesn't go corrupt. I don't know why. Why do, why do SD cards go corrupt? If anybody knows, leave a comment down below. Let's get started. Okay, so these are the last of the rivets that I have on the bus that I haven't removed yet just because I'm not sure where exactly I'm going to cut. Um, I'll go ahead and remove uh, these four because the new sheet metal is going to come and cover these holes anyway. So instead of punching and drilling all these rivets, I found it much much easier just to use a grinder and a flat disc. If you don't know what a flat disc is, it's like a polishing disc. Looks like one of these. This is a flat disc because it has flaps. Um, it's also gr called um, a grinding polishing disc there. Uh, I got this one from Lowe's. It's from Diablo. Uh, I think Home Depot sells the Walt ones. They're all the same. Um, I'm using a 60 grit and it's four and a half um, inch because it fits on my four and a half inch grinder. So you want to make sure that you have um, a grinding cover guard. This got let out. It wasn't returned with the grinding guard. So I'm going to be wearing welding gloves. So I have, um, I have a nice face shield on. I brought it home from work. If you don't have a face shield, Please use some safety glasses. Uh, you are dealing with sparks. Um, things can catch on fire if you're not careful. So just be aware of where you're shooting sparks. Today's a very windy day, so I have the wind to my back. So hopefully I'm going to be shooting sparks this way and hope that the wind doesn't catch them and bring them back to me. Um, you should be wearing earplugs because uh, sometimes the sparks will come back and get in your ears. Uh, that's why I have this uh, face shield on today, because it lowers the risk of that. So if I punched and drilled these uh, rivets right here, it probably take me about five to 10 minutes uh, a rivet, because these are, these are not aluminum, these are steel rivets. I find it much, much easier to use the grinder. Uh, it should only take me about five to 10 minutes to do these four. So if you're going to do, if you're going to grind the rivets on your school bus, this is how you should do it, in my opinion. Uh, if you want to clean your look and you're raising your roof and for whatever reason you have a lot more money to spend on drill bits, I don't, these are pretty cheap. You can pick up a, one of these um, polishing discs for about four dollars. For the whole bus, I think I've only used about four or five of them. Um, this is my fifth one, so it did this whole side and did the other side. And um, yeah, I mean it's fairly quick. You're just grinding off the head, and then you go back with the center punch, and you push the rivet all the way through. Uh, I may have to go back inside and take out this window just to show you how easy it really is to punch them through. So let's get started.
Make sure you wear gloves with one of these. You don't want to lose the finger. So what you're looking for while you're grinding these, you don't want to just, you know, put, put all your pressure on it and hope to grind all the way down. You just want to hit it a little bit, pull the grinder away, see how it progress is. What you're really looking for is this little disc from the head of the rivet that connects to the shaft. This little disc is really what you're looking for. This separates the main body of the rivet to the outside uh, which prevents it from pulling through. Um, this is what we're looking to remove because now we can go back and we can recess these rivets. Now we just grab our center punch and a good size hammer. Try to find the center of it in case it doesn't, you know, go all the way through, you may do, you may have to go back and drill them. going in quite nicely. Okay, so now I'm going to go back inside, remove this window, just so I can push these through all the way. You can see one of these rivets already fell out on its own. This is what the rivet will look like after the head's ground off. Come right out. So what was that? Uh, minus taking the window out. Five minutes, maybe seven minutes tops. So now, and it's okay that the metal is exposed here. All this is going to be covered. Um, you should prime this anyway. Uh, some contact adhesive is going to be going along here to the new panel to seal it. Also to keep it from rattling. Uh, so that, that wasn't too bad. So I did all the rivets all the way down this side. So I went around and I knocked out like majority of the rivets throughout the box. Some of the rivets are still in there. I'll go back with the grinder, touch them up because they're still fat. Uh, pronounced is the better word uh, on this side just to push them out. You can see these ones here. I haven't tried to push them out. 
it should just come right out. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back, and I'm using structural aluminum rivets. And I think I have some. I'm, let, let me show you. I do. I do, I do, I do, I do. So this is a quarter inch structural pop rivet. It's it's uh it's called a blind side rivet because steel rivets you need an anvil on the other side. So this will just slide into the gun. It'll pull this. We're gonna call it a plunger. I know it's not called a plunger, but it'll pull this plunger in and make the aluminum rivet expand. I want to try and replace the rivets with something um, as close that I can while still um, it's time efficient. So this is what I'm going to be using to replace the steel rivets that I'm now removing. Um, I did take all the windows out to remove all the other rivets. They just go back in and they're secured with the screws on the inside. So when I go to remove the roof, I'll pull all the windows out, raise the roof, and then uh, I'll put all the windows back in just to kind of keep the weather out and then put a tarp over the bus. It's going to take a little while for me to order the sheet metal material because it's a little bit pricey. I did order the square tubing I need. It's quarter inch. It's one and a quarter inch by quarter inch wall. And I got five 12 footers. So even if I did put, if I put a piece in every pillar, but still have enough left over. Um, I do need some right around here to tie tie the roof in from here to here. I don't know if I'm going to do a slanted roof or it's just going to be flat. I'm sure we'll figure that out. Like I said before, I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants. If something goes wrong, I have the opportunity to take a minute, evaluate the situation, and go from there rather than trying to plan everything out exactly how I want to do it, because nothing usually goes to you know, plans. So I figure I go into the task with a, a good idea and try to achieve the goal and you know make little goals. And then if something goes wrong, figure it out. That way you know, you're not getting bummed out by you know, things not going the way they planned. Not everything goes the way you plan it. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And uh, well, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and leave your comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video.